I had a kind of obsession since I was very little. I used to uh, draw London buses uh, obsessively. I think they were close to getting a psychiatrist. Um, <laughs> I drew and drew and drew London buses when I was no more than seven or eight, something like that. And then by the time I was 11, I was by the airing cupboard door with my little easel, set up painting still lives and landscapes for the family. But I'd sort of pursued a, a career in music during my late teens, but even then when I was touring with a band, I used to paint and draw, because, I mean, there's only so much performing you can do. We had all day, you know, waiting for the shows, so I would paint and draw. And then the point came, that was in Canada, the point came back in England on the south coast where I had to think, well, I think I'd like to be really good at the one or the other. And so, which way do I go? And basically it was just a decision. I had a gallery owner, by the way, who, um, she was a lesbian. And, uh, and the thing about it is she chose it. Her partner was born a lesbian. Isn't that interesting? You know, it's, she thought it was a good idea, her partner had no choice. I find that interesting. Well, I had a choice, and <laughs> not about being a lesbian, but I had a choice, and, um, and I just made a decision. I thought, a life on stage in the early 70s in music was full of all sorts of vagaries and was very little to do with how good a, of a musician I was, so I thought, really? And also, you really couldn't have a family life, and I wanted to have a family, so I thought, Do I think I'll spend my life in a studio. So I did. The best thing that ever happened to me was that my art college rejected me and um, wouldn't let me do painting, so that was the best thing because I had to create my own apprenticeship. And um, so at the time, the government in Britain was giving grants to do a degree. When you went to university, they paid you instead of the other way around. Um, kind of a socialist government, almost. And um, so I took the longest degree I could find, four years, paid for my living, and for four years, I used the evenings, weekends, and vacations to train myself as an artist. And the break was that quite by coincidence, a friend had a store and uh, he, he said, will you paint a mural on my store? And I did it and the BBC thought, whoa, this is very interesting. And that led to another commission, which led to another, and they followed my career from then on. And uh, it was great practice. <laughs> That just felt like having my cake and eating it. The best thing, to do what you love to do and uh, make a living by doing it seemed just perfect. And, and I never looked back. That was 35 years ago and uh, I've done that ever since in a variety of ways. There was an initial an initial seven years of painting murals, and I did 25 interior and exterior murals, up to six stories. So they were up to about 60 feet, and um, um, so huge scaffoldings. And then I came back to Wales and I did, probably the most important commission was for the University of Wales. The whole of Illusion mural was maybe the most important commission. But there were lots of them, and it was really fun. I used to take all the boards out and walk on the rails, and it was rainy, so it's completely suicidal, and only the kind of thing that a, you know, someone in their 20s can do with courage. Um, <laughs> in the wind, in the rain, on steel poles. Yeah, 60 feet up, that's very wise, and... <laughs> yeah, oh dear. 
finishing the mural because you couldn't see it with all the boards in. It was great. I studied Stanley Spencer, who was a, an English, very eccentric artist, a very strange man. He was a really helpful influence. Tamara de Lempica. Then ultimately I just went shopping, like a supermarket. I went to Picasso for structure, Caravaggio for tonality, Felice Casarati for tonality, Gauguin for colour, then all the early colourists for colour. So I really, really went shopping. I need this from here, that from there, that from there, to build what I wanted to be and, and how I wanted to do it. And then, um, a comment from Ivan, and then I really studied colour with a couple of real connoisseurs in Belgium and New York in the 80s. I was very fortunate to run across them and I, I learned colour. And very grateful, you know, isn't it funny that not intentionally like a university course, but sometimes quite by chance in a corner of the world there's someone that's an absolute gem for what you do, a mentor. Yeah. I've had a few of those. I love the sort of chess game of balancing symbolism, um, tonal value, color, composition. I love the chess game. Darkening, lightening, bringing forward, pushing back, adjusting, tilting. Um, I love that. I think that when I go in search of information for paintings, it's uncomfortable because I wander in the unconscious looking. And it is a little like going through a doorway in the here and now into a place that contains everything. All that's ever happened to me, all the fears and dreads and, uh, and loves and passions, it's all through there. Making the paintings and copying what I have seen there is relatively easy. But going there to dredge it for paintings and ideas is uncomfortable. But it's the only place I can go. Despite the modern notion that art has to do with decor, and it does and can. And I was a muralist, which is heavily decorative. <laughs> um, but despite that, I'm inclined to think that the windows in our homes, in those frames, are windows and views on the outer world. And through the frames of our paintings are views on the inner world. And I think that ultimately, just like in the art that hung in cathedrals in medieval times that pilgrims used to walk for hundreds of miles to kneel before visions of their beliefs, visions of a, another time and place, I think in the same way, in an ideal world, we are surrounded by pictures of the physical world in our home through the windows, and visions of the inner world, of our passions and longings and fears, and all that we truly are occurring in images and paintings and in bronzes around our homes as reminders, as provocation, as many things. I think that's its function.